Again, I'd like to thank our hosts here, Bill and the team. Um, as he said, it's the fourth time I've been over here. Uh, I really look forward to this trip. I learn something new every time I'm out here. And hopefully today we're going to bring um, a little bit of something back to you guys uh, from England. I'm going to talk about Avalosin and how we've used it and how we've done some field trial work uh, with ECO over the last couple of seasons. I work for a company called Lane's Vet Group. We're a 19, we might be 20 man practice by the time I get home. Uh, our small and large animal teams just seem to hire people every week. We started back in 81 with just two of us. Um, we've now got 52 total staff and, and, and as I say, of that we've got 20 veterinarians. So we've grown and part of that growth uh, has been a movement into the poultry industry. We're half a world away, so uh, if I could just find the pointer on this thing, we're somewhere about here today, and we come from somewhere about there. And uh, as you can see, we're actually a lot further north than you guys. And as Steve said, we don't have a climate, we have weather. Um, last August, August for us is our peak production season for our reared birds. And it's also the wettest month of the year on record. So everybody thinks of a nice English summer. Um, it's not always like that. It's, it's a lot wetter. So what are we going to do today? I'm going to first of all look at this Avalosin field trial that we did last year. Um, the results of actually using the drug and some of these questions Ben, you asked, um, I'll come back to and give you a practical example of some of the ways we've used the drug and some of the successes we've had um, when we've been in a situation where we already had birds with, with bull GI. A uh, few results from other species. Um, I know that there's a large turkey population here in, in this part of America, so we'll have a look at some results from some turkeys, just as a, some shared results from a, a colleague in the southwest of England. And then I, I just want to say a little bit about Avalosin from my point of view uh, as to what it is and the advantages it's got. We've got the same problems that you've got. Very few drugs are licensed for game birds in the UK and that's simply market share. These drug companies can't afford to spend tens of thousands of pounds to market, uh, to, to manufacture or license drugs from because the market is actually so small when they come to sell those drugs. We, we do have this cascade system where at veterinarian's discretion, we can prescribe drugs that are licensed for the same disease in another species for a different disease. And we can take that one stage further to any licensed drug. Um, but you are getting into sort of risky territory there if it hasn't been used in that species or a similar species, although we have had to go to that excess. It's also difficult to get official field trials with the government because the drugs are not licensed or not in the process of being licensed. And this is also an important point which I'll refer to again and again in subsequent slides. We can't get a negative control when we're testing for this drug in the field because they're so frightened that if we're testing the drug in a disease situation and we don't give it to one large group of birds, that we're going to have a welfare situation amongst those birds and that will not do our relationship with, our, with the antis um, any good at all. So that's the background to, to the work we've done. And I've just said, we cannot get a no drug control. And that in itself makes moving forward, and they also won't let us test against, or they're very reluctant to let us test against non-licensed drugs, because those drugs don't have a license. So it's a chicken and egg situation. You've either got to have a license, and then you can test it, or you don't test it. So the game bird drug industry, it, it's very difficult to move it forward. In this particular trial, um, we took three drugs, two established and the, the one new drug, the avalosin, in caught-up birds which usually have mycoplasma. 
and you will note the word usually. For those of you who aren't totally familiar with the um, UK system of rearing birds, we're seasonal and we place our birds in the wild, as it were. We, we don't do place to take and point shooting, point hunting like you do. We send our birds out into the woods. Um, we're in a release pen and then we gradually open that pen up and we feed the birds so we control their movements in and out of the cover um, by where we feed them. And we can virtually train the birds and then we can put the guns in so that the birds will fly over the guns on shoot days. So our system is very, very different to yours. We would put tens of thousands of birds out onto big shoots and we won't shoot them all. Unlike yourselves where you go to the club or you go to the hunt club and you know there's nine birds or ten birds or thirty birds in the cover. We, we don't work like that. We, we tend to waste a lot of birds in that respect but when we come to the end of the season we know that there are still birds out there on the shoots and we, we, you can then catch those birds up and bring them back in uh, as breeding birds. Now the company that I work for don't, don't normally do that they will have about 40,000 breeding hens in, in the pheasants and they will only use caught up birds uh, and, and all that is contracted out so those are on about 16 or, or 20 um, contracted uh, laying farms. Helps with the biosecurity, we have the birds all in separate places. We don't normally use caught up birds, last year we had the option they were a little bit short on breeding birds. We caught up 3,000 birds and they agreed for Steve's company to do this trial. So we're working there in North Lancashire with 3,000 birds, three groups of 1,000, labelled A, B and C. You know, we're pretty, it's pretty back sticks country where we are, but, but we can do A, B and C. Three by three metre pens, uh, ten hens, one cock. Hens were the French commons and the cocks were set and cross Japanese greens. I'll show you Japanese green in a minute because it might not be a bird that you're familiar with. Um, custom laying site, so the land was rented. Uh, we had an all-girl management team. They were a mum and two daughters that did all the egg collection for us. Birds and the pens were supplied by the hatchery, by the breeding company and they're paid by eggs hatched. So you've got to look after the birds um, and you've got to collect your eggs very carefully and keep them as clean as possible, etc. There we go, French common hen. This is the Japanese green boy, bonnie bird, slightly smaller than the, than the ring necks um, and a beautiful green head to him. He's smaller, he's faster, he's feisty. So he's got a lot of advantages when crossed onto, produces quite a challenging bird when he's crossed onto your, crossed onto your common. Again, that's where we were, right there in the north of England. Anybody heard of Manchester? Manchester United? Yeah. Yeah, there are two great football teams in the north of England that play in red. That's Liverpool and Liverpool reserves. <laughs> you can tell I'm not a Manchester United supporter. Brave man who comes to America and talks about English soccer, I guess. There we go. So that's where we are. These are the pens. Typical, typical uh, small farm here. Uh, this area of England uh, renowned for its small mixed uh, farms. This farm is, is no longer a working farm. Uh, it does a little bit of arable work, doesn't have any stock. But it, uh, when I first knew this farm 30 years ago, it ran about 20 or 30 breeding ewes. It ran uh, about 40 dairy cattle uh, and a few pigs and a few chickens. So a real mixed farm. Um, now he just does arable and a little bit of beef. The actual pen site was behind here, and I'll show you an aerial picture in a minute. Just note that we have these high voltage electricity pylons. 
because uh, that will become significant. That's the trial site from the air. So there's the farm. Uh, sorry, there's the roadway where we were stood. That's the farm. Track down into the field. This is a pile of um, paper waste fertilizer. And that's the area where we had the pens in. We didn't get an aerial photograph for the actual pens. So I've just put that on as a, as a schematic. These are the actual pens, uh, a three board, 10 by 10. We say the three board, three boards on the side there. Prevents the cop being able to see out and becoming intimidated by his neighbor. So he's just concentrating on his girls. We find we get a much better result if they're not looking at each other and just sort of engaging in boyish things, but uh, spending their time looking after the girls. Each line had a separate dosatron pump, which you probably mostly be familiar with. We used three different drugs. Again, some of those you'll be familiar with. Tylan, Bill, obviously you're very familiar with that drug. Tiamulin is the generic name for a whole family of drugs. You've probably got a drug called Denigard in this country, which you use in swine, in the hog industry. Yes, no? Anybody familiar with that? It's, it's a drug based on Tiamulin. We used a, a drug that's um, used in the UK called Tiamvet for this one. And the third, third group had the avalosin. Eggs were collected da daily. Details were recorded per pen. Calculations were done. Total eggs per pen per week. Total eggs rejected. And the mortality. We actually recorded the mortality by the day. And we were then able to, to, to arrive at this figure, and that will become significant in a few minutes, called the bird alive days. And that means that if you started at the beginning of the week with, with um, 10 birds, at the end of the week, if nothing had died, you'd have 70 bird days. If a bird died on the Wednesday, you'd have about 67 bird days. Does that make sense? Are you with that? Because it, it does become quite important in a minute. At the hatchery, we then noticed any rejections, just the same as Ben will talk to you about. We, you know, you take further rejections out when you can see any problems at the hatchery. We recorded numbers set and numbered hatched. What we didn't do was look at the um, health of the chicks from each group. Uh, and Steve, if you're listening, go and talk to Mr. Tasker and see if your purse is stretchable and whether we can actually do some work on whether we actually produce a more healthy chick from birds that we've had to treat with avalosin. Oh, what we done? Wrong button. Sorry. Um, birds were placed from mid-March. Caught up birds. They all came from one shoot, which was fortunate. So we had a fairly homogenous group. And again, that will become important in a minute. Birds arrived in two lots. And they arrived two weeks apart. Again, part of the story, it'll become apparent. Production started almost immediately, but was not sufficient to record till we'd actually got everything in place. So the first birds were set at the end of March. First eggs were set at the end of March, and the last eggs were set at the beginning of June. So just about 12 weeks, 10 or 12 weeks in there. Before, during, and, before and during the trial, the birds were medicated three times. We medicated them the first time uh, in the week before we started the recording. We then medicated them two weeks and two weeks again. So they were medicated every two weeks. Same drug in each group on each occasion, obviously. Uh, the trial was blind. Uh, the, the medication was actually done by the hatchery manager. So I didn't know, and the girls collecting the eggs didn't know, and Steve, who was helping us supervise the trial as an independent, because we had to get this trial licensed by the Home Office, um, didn't know which were which. Dead hens were not replaced, but dead cockles, obviously, for sake of fertility, were. Trial, we had some problems. We had some escapees, uh, which we tried to catch up and tried to put back in the same place, but uh, wasn't always exactly possible. Um, the electricity pylons... We got a static electricity problem, and the girls were getting shocks when they were opening the pens because <laughs> they were lying under the, 
these uh, 120,000 volt uh, pylons. And we don't know what effect, if any, that had on the birds. Uh, but they were pretty reluctant to go near the wire. <laughs> the other problem we had was these were caught up birds which were usually riddled with mycoplasma. We picked one year where we only had one bird that we saw actually sick with, with the infraorbital sinus problems. Um, but we didn't do, because, because we had a limited cost, we weren't able to do any testing on that to see whether we could isolate the, the birds. So we, we confidently set this trial up in caught-up birds in which we normally have a... Um, sorry, I've got a little echo there. In which we normally have mycoplasma, and it didn't happen for us. But we carried on. Again, just a reminder, we weren't allowed untreated controls, so it's a comparison between the drugs that we're looking at, not a comparison with nothing. It's a natural model. Birds, the, I'm always conscious of telling my clients we're dealing with wild birds in captivity. You know, we have them for so long. Um, they're not going to behave like a nice pen of broiler chickens uh, in a nice controlled environment shed. And there may be forces affecting the work, which we'll come to look at in a second, such as pecking or predation. Uh, and we did have some predation amongst the pens. So here are the results. Now, on the first basis, they actually look fairly homogenous. There's very little difference between those groups. And if we look at them, sorry, that was the chicks per hen per week throughout the laying period, so they gradually came up, plateaued, and then gradually dropped off before, until we, we actually stopped the trial after 10 weeks. The laying rate was, was pretty similar, again, for, for all three of the groups with, with very little difference on the raw data. And that's just it. Um, I can now tell you that group A was the avalosin, group B was the tiamulin, and group C was the old tylan. So on that basis, chicks per thousand per week this is, so we're getting about 47% um, chicks hatched, and we're getting 0.8 of a percent more out of the avalosin group. Now that probably is not statistically significant, but we had, you know, we are working with a field trial, we are working with a natural model, and we were working with things like pecking and uh, predation. So I want to show you now, um, we looked then at the factors of, we said, have we rejected any more eggs in any of the groups? And if you look at these, there's a general pattern of the rejections went up with the number of birds. They came down in the middle there, and they, they were starting to rise towards the end as the eggs were getting, as the birds were getting a little bit tired. Just remember how those slide, how those lines look, and then look at these. These are the mortalities amongst the group. But bear in mind that we saw no clinical disease. So here, groups A and C, and then group A, uh, and a little bit again here in group C, and A again, showed some massive mortality spikes. And we were a little bit puzzled by these. Then we found out this was an escape issue. So in week four, we had an entire pen manage to dig their way out and disappear into the surrounding environment. In this particular week, uh, Monsieur Reynard visited us and took out another two pens. So these mortalities were in no way related to the disease. So 
we said we could realistically st do run some statistics and take that effect out and then let's see what happens. This is what happened when we took the, uh, when we, we gave everybody the same number of alive bird days. And I think the mortality rate was about 0.2% per week or something like that. So we were losing about 20 birds per thousand per week. And that figure represents that level of mortality rolling through all three groups at the same rate. So we've ironed out those peaks in A that we knew were absolutely nothing to do with disease. Then look what happens. Oh, didn't give you a chance. Group A, 3,000, 3,002, 3,002. So groups B and C are virtually identical. And group A, if you allow for the mortality which was suffered in those groups, Group A actually did a lot better, performed a lot better with the drug uh, and gave us an extra, it's about 50 eggs per thousand per week. So it's about 5% improvement. Now that was in the absence of disease. It's very difficult to stand here and say, use the drug. And, you know, I know your vets wouldn't do it. You can't use that, that drug as a production enhancer, but it gives us some idea that if disease had been there, how those groups would have reacted if we'd had to treat them. So we believe that it's going to have a significant effect on disease. 3,000 birds the previous season caught up with bull GI, and Ben, this sort of answers your question. We treated them with three-day course, the recommended dose of Aveline WSG, we call it, water-soluble granules, 2% solution through the dosatron. Excellent initial clear-up. And these were birds that were just at the stage of sort of shutting their eyes, not got the bulgy, but certainly got the conjunctivitis, certainly got to the stage where their eyes were shutting, got an excellent clear-up. But as in the UK, as in the, I'm sure it's the same here in the States, you can tell a farmer a mile off. Do you know how to spot a farmer? I'm a farmer's son, so I can say this. Do you all know how to spot a farmer in public? They've got sticky out ears and flat foreheads. How much? How? So they didn't do the follow-up treatment. Wasn't done as recommended a second pulse 14 days later. The result was a recrudescence of the disease. And it then actually took us two more courses to clear it up. So we know we get an initially excellent knockdown, but the recommendation is that you repeat it, you pulse dose it, and it will then work. Another smaller outbreak in the same year was treated according to manufacturer's recommendations and the results were outstanding. So all I can say is, do what it says on the tin. As we're not far from Turkey country here, just a quick mention of that. It's been used in both growing and fattening birds by a colleague of mine with great success. One grower with a now, with a sight problem, is using the drug because he knows the disease is there, he knows he's going to get hit, and last year his birds averaged a pound heavier going to Christmas table. So, great, um, great drug from that point of view as well. It's fast, Steve showed you, this is Avalosin from my point of view, from the point of view of the veterinarian. It's quick, it gets into the bloodstream really quickly, it gets to the site of infection, the point that Steve was stressing, um, it gets inside the cell and mycoplasma 
it's one of the few bacteria that actually ventures into the cells. Uh, I, th I think that's something, Steve, that you perhaps didn't just stress. It's an intracellular, so with this drug, we can actually trace the bug into the cell. It continues to act, and it's stable. If you're going to put it in your water system, we have had situations where a guy in a field situation, one of our clients in a field situation, has actually mixed three days with the water and replaced his normal water supply with that. Um, so it's pa it is palatable. We have never had any palatability issues. If we use uh, the Tiamulin product, the Denigard product, or the Tiamvet product, we actually have to put something like fruit juice or um, Vimto or you might have heard of this famous Scottish drink they have in Scotland, any of you that visited England, called Iron Brew. Um, it's, like a, it's like one of your Coke derivatives, it's, it's that sort of thing. And they actually use that to flavour the water to kid the birds that they can't taste the drug. So, but not with Avalosin. It's very soluble. It works really well. You don't have to use warm water to get it in. And it's got a fantastic safety margin. So from our point of view, where you're working with pheasants in situations that are very often not the best, you know, you're not working in an environmentally controlled broiler house or barn, you're working in the field, you, you've, got, you've got margin for error, which sometimes is very, very important when you're treating birds. I think it's a great drug. It does what it says on the packet. There's your Japanese green again, and I'd like to say thank you for your attention.